our second in our series of three uh, seminars on um, advanced legal research, in this case about another case law. Uh, I acknowledge the Gadamer people of their Aura Nation, the traditional custodians of the land on which we, uh, on which Chambers is located and from which we are transmitting today around Australia. And I pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. And I also extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait uh, Islander peoples joining us today, wherever we're located. Uh, welcome. This is a very exciting uh, event. It's our second event, and I can tell you today, uh, my feet have been nailed to the floor so that I can't move as much as I did last time, uh, and my head is not as cropped. But quite apart from that, uh, my name is Michael Green, uh, and I'm a barrister at Level 22 Chambers. Uh, and I was one of the people, as I said on the last occasion, for those that may have missed it, uh, but uh, one of the people created Jade to uh, help to improve affordable and sustainable access to legal information. Um, we have a uh, question and answer session with an open mic session. If you wish to ask questions openly, you can ask anonymously. Uh, and in the Q&A session, you can ask anonymously as well. Uh, there will be a, this, today we're talking about advanced, uh, advanced case law and next week we'll be talking about uh, statute, uh, statute research. Uh, so in our last session, we looked at uh, strategies for successful legal research uh, and we looked at uh, the concepts of uh, how, to, how to formulate a strategy for performing legal research efficiently. Uh, and how to make sure that legal research uh, uh, met our very strategic requirements. Uh, so on the last occasion, we talked about uh, research reason, determining your research strategy, your time budget and your risk appetite. And thank you very much for all the very helpful suggestions we've had from the last session, which we're using today uh, in this session. So today's uh, session has, like the last one, has three parts, but they're slightly different. The first is what is case law uh, and how to work with case law. The second are research examples and tips. And the third is about using uh, result, results of research, which will include a uh, question and answer session where we can work together on some problems if you have any of those problems or suggestions. Uh, so, uh, I'll be using Jade, as I've said on the last occasion, to illustrate the legal research projects process, but uh, you can do the same thing with Austin and other tools, and we'll show you how to do some of those things. Now, I'm sure you'll have some research questions. Uh, it is an interactive session, as I've said, and if you have questions, you can ask them any time. Don't hold back. Uh, often, the question that you want to ask is some question someone else is thinking and wishes to ask because too. Uh, concerned about coming forward and doing so. So please feel free to ask that question and we'll address, we'll address as many of those as we can. Um, now, as I said, uh, it's any kind of research, the best way to learn how to do research is to do, is to try to practice, to practice when you least need to practice. That is, a, a, when you have a bit of spare time, you want to learn something about the tools and it's a very good way to keep your legal knowledge up to date. And as I said on the last occasion, there's no one right way to undertake legal research. There's plenty of wrong ways, but there's no one right way. So develop your own style, you'll become efficient. Something that works for you may not work for someone else, but it's still just as valid. Uh, now, I'm also assuming, because uh, for those of you who are here on the last occasion, that you've, you've taken heed of having a research notebook and you've started to enter things into your research notebook to try to build up your process of doing research and learning from what works and what doesn't. And if you have any insights from the last occasion, uh, please feel free to, uh, to ask those or make those suggestions for the benefit of others. Well, what do we need to do uh, on the next slide, please? What, we, what, do we, what is case law? Uh, what do we need to, uh, to learn about case law? What are the key six principles we need to know about in order to be successful uh, case law researcher. Well, we need to know what case law is and what it's not. There's a lot of people who make assumptions about case law. Uh, we need to understand that cases cover, thank you very much, cases cover uh, multiple topics and principles. That is, uh, cases don't stand for one legal principle or one legal subject. Most, on many occasions, 
they stand for multiple, they're not monolithic. And uh, that means that some of the principles in some of the cases may be overturned by other courts or doubted by other courts, but other parts of the case may be still uh, amount to good law. And it's important to know the difference and, and the different strands of the case. That's why it's hard to have a traffic light system you might see in some products where they where a case is doubted or overruled and the like, because really what's being overruled is of course in the case of, on appeals that the orders made by a court, but in relevant to the question of precedent and legal principle, it may be one other aspect of the case. So a case might be doubted as to its discussion of a particular topic, but that doesn't mean that the case is wrong in all respects. Uh, you need to understand something about the variety of media neutral citations because uh, Australia has been one of the first to adopt many neutral citations. It has a vast variety of them, some less reliable than others, and you need to know something about that. You need to know something about the risks of relying on full text searches, that is, uh, undertaking research where what you do is bullion searching on full text and why that's a good thing in some cases and why it's a bad thing in others. Uh, and you need to understand uh, uh, why you need to consider case law and how you need to consider case law, and lastly, the benefits of using authorised reports. Well, let's start with uh, what is case law and what it's not. So case law that we talk about is really everything above the waterline. So that is the authorised reports, reported cases, that's cases in reports, in printed reports other than authorised reports, uh, and cases with written reasons. And what you find on Jade and Ostley and other systems is everything really above the waterline. Uh, you'll never, you'll never uh, uh, have access unless you were present to the reasons for decision that were given orally. That is, that are not, even though a transcript may have been taken, that transcript's never taken out, never published otherwise than the pronouncement by the judge in court. Uh, and of course, uh, there are many cases that are heard and determined where, for example, they settle or, a, or, a, uh, or the, uh, the matter is so obvious that the court simply makes orders dismissing the, the giving of very minimal reasons that have very little precedential value. And so one finds that generally authorised reports has, have more obviously the precedential value in the sense that they uh, often are selected because they contain statements of principle. But all cases, regardless of whether they're reported or not, have uh, a role to play in understanding the following legal principle. And there are many reasons why cases that are very important are never reported. And you'll find that some authorised report series, um, the CLRs are not technically the authorised report series, but everyone treats them as such. The CLRs, the New South Wales Law Reports, the Victorian Reports and other report series all uh, have from time to time catch up volumes where they have a volume of cases that were overlooked for inclusion at an earlier time, the cases turned out to be important and therefore they're included as part of a, a special volume of cases of note that should be reported. Uh, the High Court did that in relation to the Commonwealth Law Reports in volume 180, I think more recently as well. So in that case, some of the cases that were very widely cited by in other contexts then became a, a reported case in the CLR. So maybe they reported in other series, but they weren't reported in the CLR series. So uh, you just need to know that not everything is reported. And therefore, if you're looking for a principle, you're not always going to find a principle, even if it was considered by a court. The other thing you need to understand is because case law is a, a task of writing and using uh, plain language, sometimes the terminology that a court might use is not the terminology that you would use. And therefore, you might find it hard to find good cases on principle. The other thing you need to know is in, if you were to look at the volume of material that's called case law, a vast percentage of that would come within the area of practice and procedure. And that will never be reported. And some of that is never really an illustration of any important principle. But as you become more experienced, you may find it useful to collect practice and procedure cases in particular areas in which you practice because they may illustrate an approach taken by a court that might be useful to you in practice, and that's important. So keep, keep in mind that there's a diversity of material. Uh, and then moving to the next slide, if we could, uh, uh, we need just to change the screen a little bit. This is the magic of, the magic of computerization. Uh, 
you need to, uh, the second point, which I mentioned, is really that cases, multiple, many cases discuss, discuss multiple, multiple issues. Uh, and uh, you can use citators like the J case trace to learn enough to be efficient. The reason why we developed case trace in J is because, and you'll see this shortly, is because we show the, cons the subsequent consideration of a case at the paragraph level in relation to the media mutual, citation, mutual citation period, and at the page level, the range of page levels in the case of uh, the cases before uh, the year 2000 or year 1998, the High Court. So you need to also understand the course cases are often uh, traverse over uh, diverse areas. Uh, you need to, uh, and the considered separate sections, uh, you can use case trace coupled with the full text of the case to get a feel, a feel for what the, what the case has stood for or what, what has been taken from the case by subsequent decisions. And that can help you uh, come up to speed very quickly. If you just use one of the case citations like, uh, like case base, as it has been, or first point, or, uh, or the or Ostley's uh, case site, uh, you'll find that you'll only have a reference that the case has been cited by another case rather than um, where in the case it's cited. So you'll need to go through a fairly elaborate process to locate the particular part of the decision and go from there. And I'll we'll show you about that as well. So you can use case traits, and I'll show you, uh, to learn enough to be efficient in exploring the case. Well, let's then turn to the next slide, which is about media mutual citations. Now, media mutual citations are uh, a, a pretty much an Australian invention, but they were, they were uh, now found in Canada and the United Kingdom and New Zealand and elsewhere. And a media mutual citation, sometimes referred to as MNC, uh, and all Australian citations have those now. Uh, some of those have been retrofitted, and I'll talk about that. Uh, and you need to uh, understand the difference between a media mutual citation and a citation from a law of good series. The reason for doing that is to know whether you're referring to something at a, as, as reported or something using a media mutual citation. So what I have above my head at the moment uh, is, is, a media mutual, is a media mutual citation to explain how it works, it has a year in square brackets. It has the court, or the uh, so the federal court, or the federal or FCAFC. It was a case of the full court of the federal court, and that was a more recent denotation in 2002. Uh, the number, the case number, uh, and the paragraph range, and those from since uh, 1998 in the case of the High Court. And since really about 1999 or 2000, case other courts, that was that's been assigned by the court. Uh, the authorised reports now, people citing authorised reports now, often use the square bracket paragraph range to the right uh, of the medium initial citation as a shorthand way. So a lot of the time now, people will simply cite the uh, authorised report citation, which I'll show you, and then uh, and then a number of reference, and that's a fast, fast count way to do that. Um, you need to understand uh, something about how uh, media mutual citations came to be. Um, there, there are things called retrofitted media mutual citations. So if we go to the next slide, I can probably explain something about that. Which we call, uh, which, which I'll, there are, that retrofitted, uh, and I'll come back to what you said on the screen in a moment, but retrofitted media mutual citations, which uh, happened, um, which happened uh, with the, where Ostley retrofitted to uh, the High Court's decisions that were published in the Commonwealth Law Reports, a media mutual citation from 1904 uh, and uh, 1903, sorry, sorry, when the sale last first came out from moment on of course, but the, uh, the decisions of the uh, High Court uh, then had it were given a retrofitted media neutral citation. So I'm giving, I'm showing you Stephen the rod rib on the, the left-hand side of the screen. And what happened there was, was uh, someone went through and put a, the 
year of the decision, HCA, and then uh, a judgment number. They don't actually, they're not, the numbers don't appear to be in the order, in date order. Uh, they seem to be in some sort of other order. Uh, and the other important thing about it in the case of the High Court is that it omits numerous pre-1998 cases in the High Court, which were reported potentially in other series, uh, but don't have uh, any, uh, any media initial citation cited. Um, the, if you want to know every single decision of the High Court, whether it has a media mutual citation or not, uh, you can look in J, but you can also look at the e-resources side of the High Court, which is in point three on the right-hand side, and that will give you the definitive version of all cases that were decided by the High Court. And uh, Jade and Barnett, in its Open Law project, the 1 to 100 project, uh, digitised the first 100 volumes of the CLRs and gave those back to the High Court as well. Uh, and we also uh, we also put those in Jade, uh, and we're also working to make sure that we have other citations, regardless of whether it's an individual citation. The other thing you need to know is that in the case of the federal court, uh, the, the federal court itself used the FCA reference and went back to 1977 when the court started, uh, and gave a judgment reference number to all cases in the federal court. Now that's where the real confusion sets in, because there are two. Uh, there are two media neutral citation series, both using FCA, just as there are. Uh, and so what it means is there are the official federal court FCA references, which you should use, and there's the uh, ones that OSTA uses. And so you find there's a whole lot of collision. And there's a part of Jade, if you look at an FCA reference using a, a media neutral citation from before uh, 1999, uh, you'll find that both of those the parallel references are there. And we spent a fair bit of time working out how to disambiguate those references. And the way we do that is because the Ostley uh, reference is only really to decisions that have been reported in something called Scale Plus, which Ostley received and, and published as part of the Federal Courts material. So it's important, it's important to know, to know the, the difference between them. Now, going in the case of Steers and Broderick, the other problem that Steers and Broderick, uh, which is 1986 HCA1, as it's been retrofitted, but 160 CLR16, is that it does not have media neutral citations. But if you look online at it, uh, you will see that, uh, I'm not sure if we can do this quickly for you, but put it on screen, but we, but we will be in a moment. Yeah, for us, please. If we can, if we can show, show 160 CLR 16. So if we just type in 160 CLR 16, you'll see that's there's robbery and we press enter. Now, what you need to know there is firstly, we received also the scale plus materials. Firstly, that isn't the version you see from the uh, high, from the, uh, in the CLRs. It strips out the, uh, the head note catch words. You'll see there are a whole lot of other parallel citations to it. If you scroll through it, what I want you to see is that uh, the decision has what appears to be numbering next to it, two, three, four, five, next to it. Now that numbering, restarts for each judge. So if you go down to about, well, about paragraph 32, if you jump to uh, Justice Wilson Dawson, you see that it starts again. Now, what we've found is a number of uh, tribunals uh, cite from, obviously use Ostley as cite, cite from Ostley, cite 1986 ACA 1 at, say, 2, meaning the decision of Justice Wilson and Dawson that really uh, are not realising that that's the wrong way to cite it. What, what, uh, what Stephen and Rodri looks like in real life um, is, uh, I'll just put it up on the, on the screen here, see if this works, the magic of... Thank you. 
So, so what you see here is this is actually the reported version of the of Stephen of Library. You'll see that it has a very extensive section that contains uh, in the reported version the argument, and then it has the judgments. And the judgments do not have numbered paragraphs next to it. So you can see that it's quite a different uh, experience, uh, and uh, and you'll see that. Uh, it, the only way that one can cite a part of that page is by reference to the page number and then by reference to uh, maybe a part of the page. So uh, be careful of media mutual citations, be careful of material in uh, material that is earlier material. Um, up to volume 100 in, in Jade, uh, you'll see uh, there's, uh, there's the full text uh, they're only working to approve that as we speak. Prior to media mutual citations, another way in which some report series, I'm showing you the ICLR version on the right hand side, and that they, what was used there was uh, to use uh, letters next to it. So you'll see in some citations, if you see references to cases, you'll see, say, in this case, page 341B or 341C. Which will be, which is an example of a, of a reference to a particular, a particular part on the page, or might say uh, B to C or B to D uh, as ranges, and that's a way of providing a more pinpointed reference. So that's a precursor, really, to uh, media mutual citations. Um, now, uh, if uh, if we look at uh, the other part of media mutual citations is, uh, is what are known as uh, faux citations to earlier material, apart from the media mutual citations. Uh, so an example of that is that, that, that uh, Ostley uh, took, uh, scanned uh, earlier reports of Victorian reports or get, uh, received material from the Victorian reports. Uh, from 1996 and following. And if you, if we just go to Ostley for a moment, if we go back to the, web, the website just for a minute, and I can explain how this works. And if we just type in uh, 19 square brackets, 1986, PIC, RP, space 69. Oh, let's just go to uh, 1996. Let's, let's do A and M trading. ANN Trading, T-R-A-D-O-N-G, and then press Enter. Oh, can't find it. Let's just try uh, Case, let's try Law Site. Paste that into there. ANN, ANN Trading. In the parties, right? Search. And Commissioner of State Revenue, do you see up the top? Do you see how it says 1986 Vic? Now, if you click on that, you'll see what you find is uh, a decision of Justice Bat, but not, but without any. Uh, any head note, uh, so it's it's a stripped down version. Now, if we took that citation to the uh, three twelve, you copy that the nine nine six two VR one. Yep. And go into Victorian reports in Jade. And then you'll see, you click on that. You'll 
you'll see if you click on the top of it, you can oh, yeah, go back to that, go back to the page. And we just go view document in Jade. Uh, go back again, sorry. And we go authorized version. Click on the authorized version, up, further up. The authorized versions. See the, just the, and then you'll see the full text is available. And if we log in, we'll have the full text with the head dance and catch group. So how do you find out about then about uh, coverage? Well, there are various ways to do that. If you go back to Jade, the homepage of Jade, uh, you can browse by, in the Jade browser, you can browse by um, browse collections on the left-hand tab. You can browse by court, and if you browse by court, you can see all the courts that we cover, and you can also hone in to particular components. And you'll see that if you click on any of those, you'll see the the uh, number of decisions we have in those particular courts. You can compare that. The way that uh, Jay updates is we receive daily uh, feeds from courts and tribunals, and from IP Australia, and from other entities, uh, and we upload those and. The second that they're uploaded, as soon as they're indexed in the system, they're also uh, fully indexed into the case. So we then find other um, other case citations that have been passed and available from the citator. All right. Well, um, the uh, the what I show you one of the risks of uh, of searching full text. So if we can go back to the slides, please. Um, the first, the first point about the slide is not to is not to uh, type in just just don't start by typing your research question. Although sometimes that can be a really effective way to uh, work. But try to avoid try to avoid that. Try to avoid just typing the research problem. Although sometimes people do that, and it, it can be quite effective if you uh, inspiration. Um, but I want to tell you why that is, uh, and I'll give you an example uh, of a case called Ice TV. Now, if we I, Ice TV is um, is a case that went to the High Court, and if we call up Ice TV on our internet link, if we can go back to the internet again. Sorry about that. Uh, and if you go up to the top of Jade, the top of the page of Jade, and then just type in ICE TV, you'll see there it is. Uh, and if you scroll, if you go down to the second item and press enter, no, the, sorry, the first item, that one, yep, I caught, press enter. There it is. Now, well, this is a page in Jade. I want to tell you a little bit about searching in Jade. The first thing you'll notice is on the right-hand side of the case, uh, uh, under the word Jade case trace, you'll see that all the parallel citations. So uh, the media neutral citation starts. It's been, it appears in the Commonwealth Law Reports. Uh, it appears uh, in the uh, in the ALJRs, it appears in the ALRs, it appears in the Australian Intellectual Property Cases, and it appears in the Intellectual Property Reports. Now, all of those, are, all of those series, all of those report series, are ways in which you can read the full text of uh, ICE TV in printed form or in online form, but in online form in a, in a static form. And each of those will have paginations, as you can see. Each of those different cases, uh, reports, will have different headnotes in them. But the important part about it, which is what I want to show you, if we go down to paragraph 28. Now, as you scroll down, you see on the left-hand side, you can always see as you scroll through the case, 
which judges are speaking in the case of intermediate appellate courts. In this case, I know that I'm in the decision of Justice, of the Chief Justice, Justice uh, Crennan and Justice Keeple. Uh, and as we scroll through 28, you see on the right hand side, there are markers, clips. If we just slow down a bit, and you'll see this is one citation or two citations. There, that's an indication to you that that particular paragraph has been cited uh, previously. If we close that, sorry, so we don't get ahead of ourselves, and scroll further, scroll further, uh, you'll see down to uh, paragraph 28, and you'll see it's quite extensively cited in different parts. So we stop at 28. You'll see 28 has 18 uh, citations to it. Now, before we do anything, before we click on it, you also see that uh, underneath paragraph 28, there's a series of footnotes. So 28 has a series of footnotes. So one of the things we do in Jade is we uh, make sure that the footnote accompanies the text. So it's a very easy, when you're working with, foot, uh, working with a decision, it's very easy to read the footnotes relating to the text. And more and more courts are using footnotes to describe things in the text. And it's very hard, you have to jump to the very end to find, to find the footnote, so we put it there. The other thing you need to see on, in, the, in the document is you'll see some things are green and some things, what we call jade green, and some things are blue. Those things that are blue are things that we know about. We know their cases, but we don't have the text of the case. We do have a, we do have, we do know that it's a case, and we gather together all the times that that case has been cited. And so, if if we were to take Oldham's Press and Provincial Sports Agency, which is a 1936 case, and click on that, what will happen? What happens now is we get all the citations to that case. Even though the case is, the document is not available in Jade, we can see every time that, that case has been cited and we can see the context of which it's been cited. And so if, for example, the case has been cited and an extract of the case appears, we can read that as well. So it can be a very effective way of understanding something about the case and seeing whether you need to look at it further. And you also see that the case is aligned with a range of other cases to which you might have access. So you'll get a feel for what the decisions about. So that's a very important part of, of uh, the, the blue and the green. And if we can go back to, to, to that case, which will be in a separate window. And if you go further up to the up to the 18 citations and scroll and just click open that up. What we do here is we then take uh, all citations that include paragraph 28, and we put it, we put those references. So you can see just Judge Kelly in the Federal Circuit Court, um, uh, FCCA, Judge Kelly uh, in 2019 uh, cited uh, paragraphs 24, 28, 46, 68, and 70, and we've gathered that. And if you went to paragraph 24, you'd see that citation as well. But there's something far more important that we do with our citations. If you keep scrolling through this list, you'll see the way that cases are cited is not, they don't always use the CLR reference because for example, the CLR reference sometimes comes out a year after the decision. And the other thing that courts are doing more frequently now than they have before, if you, if you keep scrolling, and every time we have, we, we hit the case, we then see the slow, slow down, you go back there, go back, sorry. On that page, you'll see that the judge in that case hasn't cited, in paragraph 50 of the decision, hasn't cited the full text of uh, CLR, the 2239CLR458, has simply seen ICE TV at a particular paragraph reference, and we've picked that up. So that's a very important part of what we do. But if you keep going and scrolling further, so these are going back in time. So now we're back to 2014, at that stage here, ICE TV, Again, no citation whatsoever, uh, uh, other than the abbreviation. In this case, 239, we keep scrolling further, further back in time. So you can see, you can get a very good feel for what, how that case was discussed in subsequent cases. And it's something that's unique to Jade. Uh, and it's an incredible time saver because you can find other cases that are relevant and keep scrolling. What we're about to hit, which is the reason why we want to keep scrolling, if you keep scrolling, there are so many of these cases, but it gives you an idea. Let's slow down uh, and keep going. Sorry, just a bit more and a bit more. Keep going, we'll just keep. 
and it'll get to get further down. Slide stop. So even this this is a citation from 20, uh, 2010, Justice Gordon, when her honour was in the uh, federal court, and you'll see there there's a cite a reference made to the ALRs. So we pick that up as well, and that that's the point about courts using media neutral citations now, even though they're using reports or even unauthorised reports such as the ALR or the ALJR. And we, we gather those all together. And we do that for the Victorian reports as well. We do that for the New South Wales Law Reports series when if you're in the Victorian uh, reports site or the New South Wales Law Reports site, we do that. So it doesn't matter that the decision was only reported, it, it was only uh, written about by another court in the media neutral citation. Nevertheless, we will include that, or if it's in the ALR, or it's in a parallel citation, we collect those all together. So that's a very powerful feature. If you scroll right down to the end of paragraph 28, you'll see how that plays out. No, sorry, 28 on the right-hand side, please, sorry. And you'll see throughout the full text is there, keep going. Uh, again, at the very end, from 2010, uh, very recently after that decision, there's a, there's a reference to, uh, again, an abbreviation. And so it's a very, it's a very quick way. Now, if, if I wanted to go into Larrikin Music and I click on that, there are two important things about this which I want to tell you about. Firstly, um, I've only selected this case because I knew it had been appealed. But you see at the top of the yellow bar, which tells you something about the fact that the decision you're looking at has been appealed. So it, it's a good chance, that, that good chance you probably need to look at the subsequent appeal uh, or, the, or the two further appeals. So the prior appeal is probably the substantive one and it tells you something about it. The other thing is if you look at the litigation history, so you see on the right hand side, before you jump anywhere, we're back in case trace. So you see this decision, which is a first instance decision of, of Justice Jacobson in the Larrigan Music case, you'll see that it's reported in the ALRs and in the IPRs. It, there was, you, we know that special leave was refused. You see that on the, on the right side of the box. So that's the most recent update. Uh, and we know that the appeal. Now, if you want to get a grip, uh, if you want to understand what the case is about, if you go down to litigation history, you'll see that we actually show in litigation history, the entire history of the case and the little green diamond shows you which case you're on. So you can, you have a whole history of a case. And now this is quite an important point because frequently cases change their name on appeal. So you can't always do this by, by this is not an example where the names will change, but there are many cases where maybe the second, uh, the, the second plaintiff or the second defendant appeals and the first defendant doesn't and the case is renamed. And if that's the case, it's very hard to find using full text searching that fact. This is a way of doing that. So you can see the various hearings, including the various interlocutory hearings in the full court. And you'll also be able to read the high court transcript. You want to see what happened on the special leave application, what points were raised. So it's a very useful thing. If you go further down, this is the bottom of every judgment in Jade. And not all, we don't have litigation histories for everything, but we do for a lot of things you'll see that there's cases citing the decision, which is the history. Now, if you want to have a quick feel for what Douglas Racing said about it, uh, bear in mind, of course, that's a federal circuit court, so it may not be as useful. You'll see next to that is A, which indicates that that decision itself was appealed. And so if you were to click on Douglas Racing on the left-hand side, and you click up the top of it to pull up on the page there, there yep. you'll see, again, uh, it's been appealed and you'll be able to track forward the appeal by going to uh, click on the FCA and you'll see that it, just as Anastasia had the appeal uh, and you can see if you went down the bottom page for the uh, citation report, you'll see again, no cases have cited this decision, but cases uh, cited by this decision, uh, there, are, there are a few of them. Of course, the um, uh, and you'll see we include a citation. We include the medium neutral citation. We know it, and we include uh, the most authoritative 
unauthorised report if we if there's no authorised report. So in that case cited uh, Gal and Dawson. If you click on Gal and Dawson, you'll see you can see immediately that it's in the ALRs and ALJRs, but we only report one of those. And you click on the top left hand corner and bring that up. You'll see uh, and then citation report. You'll see cases cited in the decision. Now, what I was starting to say about this is you can see um, in the citation report the alternative citations, and though you obviously either want to use the ALJRs or the ALRs or both. And then you can see on the right hand side uh, the various citations of the case. If you only wanted to show those citations, so those cases cited in this case that were in an appellate court or above, intermediate appellate court or above, you can do that by simply going to, if you're scrolling up the correction, please, and going, oh no, down, sorry, down. Uh, if you go to show, where it says all citations, you can simply go uh, HCA and appellate courts only, and that list will then be revised. Now, if, you, if, you, if we go down to where there are two citations in sharp and sharp, you see the, or well, say, even, so if you go to the right-hand side of that, this is, if you pop, if you click on that, you'll see the two locations in which that decision was cited. And that, that window is a scroll window, so you can scroll that and you'll be able to read it. So if you want to see, if you start at the bottom of the page, you can quickly look at how that particular case was considered. So that, that could be a very useful way to get your bearing, see if there are cases of interest in the like. If you're logged in, uh, you see the two flags to the top right-hand corner, you can tag those as things you want to come back to, uh, or you can use the outbound arrow on the that and click on that. You'll be able to take a citation. So you'll be able to copy a citation, like I showed you on the last occasion, with a link or the like to a clipboard and place it into a Word document. If you put the link, the link on, uh, you'll see that it becomes a link that is clickable. And if you put in, say, the bench or the date, you can have more information. And you can have it formatted. If you click on formatted, it will then make it nice and uh, there's a talis will italicise the, the uh, judgment, the case, the party's names. So you can do various things. If you want to have all reports, so say you weren't satisfied and what we selected a few the ALJRs, you can click on all reports and you'll have everything there. So that's a, an extreme version, but that's a way in which you can put together a list of authorities of various kinds. So that's available, that kind of link or copying link is available anywhere. It's available in the top right hand corner of every judgment. And it's also available in any pop-up window, as I've just shown you, which is a huge time saver. So you can very quickly do research. And if you use a research notebook, like I've mentioned, which might be an open Word document, you can copy and paste those items in. All right. So searching in uh, full text is a dangerous thing because if you were to search simply on ICE TV, let me just show you the results. We go back to the, just go back to the very top of the page and we'll run another search. So Jane offers you to do ICE TV. Now, if you just had ICE TV and you didn't know it was, uh, it, it had a, you put ICE TV with a space, ICE space TV, you'll see you'll get a different result. There'll be other, nothing comes up. But if you do ICE TV, it tries to help you. Now you can see how many ICE TVs there are. They're all different ICE TVs. So searching on the word ICE TV in the Jade search will give you any time ICE TV appears, not just, not just the High Court decision you might be looking for. So that's one reason. But let's just try that. Let's just go to Jade search and run ICE TV. You then get 141 results. You can see you get different cases, but it's finding any reference to ICE TV, which will be uh, also all the cases that we looked at before that cite ICE TV as well. You can, if you knew, if you know that ICE TV is a very rare term and you can find the case was a unique word and you knew it was in the High Court, you can filter by collection. So let's go to filter by collection on the left hand side. And let's just type in HCA for the High Court Media Mutual Citations. The way that filters work in Jade is you can select High Court, there we go, and just say filter now. Uh, and that will be all the citations. Now you can see that not only is ICE TV in, uh, in 
uh, the ICW case itself, but has also been cited subsequently. The other thing from this page you need to see is once you get these kinds of results, we tell you uh, who was on the bench, we give them media neutral citation, and we also give you uh, references to all the parallel citations that we know about. So again, it's a very fast way if you're looking for a particular citation. Say you have a collection of the uh, intellectual property reports, you have a collection of the uh, Australian law reports, and you can quickly use this to uh, as a form of index to find those entries. The other thing is, if you want to see how it was cited, if you click on uh, if you click on summary on the summary tab, you'll see there's a that tells you a little bit about the case. So that gives you the top part of the case. So it's a quick way to see is this the case I, I had in mind. And if you if you go back to excerpt and you go so if you click that should show up that something's happened. If you click on photographic performance, if you click on the, the case itself. What we do is we or we remember your search and we'll give you, we'll take you to the first location where that occurred. And if you go and see on the top left hand corner, this is Ice TV one of one. If you click on up and down, there it is. So uh, we remember the search. So even if you've done a search and you've done a full text search, you, you're able to then uh, zone straight into that particular phrase. So if you want to search on, say, statute of Anne, which is, say you wanted to say all cases refer to statute of Anne, and you wanted to just find the words statute of Anne, let's just copy those words from that, please. See? And, and then if we put those into a, into a search thing at the top of Jade, if we go right up to the top, the faster way you can jump to the top is, see, see on the left-hand side, there's a little hamburger. If you click there, you'll find uh, that will jump you to the very top of the page, but also will show you the structure of the case and also show you who's speaking. So you can, if you click there, you'll be able to jump the various parts of the case. But let's just, let's just do a statute of Anne search. So what we can do is to find that phrase, we just put, up, we put quotes around it. Just press search and you'll find. It. Now, what we do in Jade is if you want Statue of Anne and uh, Westminster, say, what you can do is you can just put space, you can put plus in front of, plus with no space in front of the quotes, no, in the, up on the other side. You put a plus there and then we create a new, a, a new phrase with the space and put a plus and then Westminster say, just, just to illustrate the point, I press enter. Now what we find there is all instances where uh, there, there's a reference to Westminster and Statue of Anne. Now, if you want to find where both of those terms are in judgment, let's look at uh, EMI and Larrikin again down, if we click on it, if we open up the EMI Larrikin, You'll see those two phrases are there, uh, and if you if you click on the down arrow, you'll see all instances where that's occurred, um, and that's when, and you click on the down. If you if you click on now, you'll only find one. But if you if you said if you wanted to find all cases that have both of those and that found all instances where statute of Anne is. You can simply type on the left hand side statute of Anne into that box on the left for focus matches. Yes, and, and then press enter, and you'll see you'll be able to. So you can refine searches. If you then wanted to just see those parts of a decision, so this is a form of filtering within a decision, you can use focus matches to, to focus. If you click on focus matches, uh, you'll see it needs to, someone needs to log in to do this, but in J Professional, you're able to show that uh, as you go and, and we'll log in to show you that after the break. All right, so that's the that's an example of uh, what happens in Jade. Again, you can see the blue and the green, uh, and you can see uh, why searching in full text works for some things, but for other things, if you do that, you'll miss out on a whole lot of other citations.
Um, try not to try not to use full text search as a way of simply trying to find the problem, but it can be a very useful way of looking for particular phrases. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But I noticed that we should perhaps have a break and uh, and ask you if you can for some uh, suggestions about some research questions that we might work on uh, once we work on the next part of our session that are. Uh, so what are we doing? We're doing a, a five minute break to, we'll try to, we'll try to have a shorter session tonight. We'll do a five minute break now, uh, or a 10, sorry, a 10 minute break now, and we'll be back at uh, 25 to six. All right, thanks. All right, welcome back. So I just want to show you something about uh, one of our other projects, the uh, Victorian Reports Project, uh, in which uh, we, uh, if you scroll down the page, please, Nick, so we can just see that for a moment. Um, in, in the Victorian Reports, what we do is we uh, are regularly publishing and you'll see um, we uh, show which reports are re uh, have been recently published. If we go down to uh, Dolby, by refining 59 VR 607. What you'll see there is uh, the, one of the things we've done here, and it's something we've also done for the New South Wales Law Reports, but this is easy to show you. It has a head note, it has a case, which is easy to read. If you scroll down the page, if you do this on an iPad, you'll find that the uh, page sizes are approximately the size. That page size is approximately uh, the size of an iPad page. And so if you keep scrolling, you'll see there's a head note with links that link to the particular parts of the judgment. So you can jump quickly to that. You keep scrolling. Keep scrolling and scrolling. You'll see that and scrolling again. And you'll see the judgment. Now, one of the things about the judgment also is it's set up as a page by page view. So if you keep scrolling, and scrolling and scrolling until we find a footnote, which we will find very shortly, you'll see that there are footnotes at the bottom of each of the pages. And so it's really very close to looking uh, at a decision uh, if you're reading it on, in paper. The other thing we do, is you'll see at the top of the page, what we do is we tell you where you are in the, no, the top of the very top of the, the very, very top, the dirt, no, stop, just, yeah, yeah, the very top, yeah. Um, trying to point the, the top part. We tell you where, where you are, and also we give you the most recent heading, and we give you the page number, and we show you who's speaking. And you'll see, in this case, Justice Whelan is speaking because Justice Whelan's name is underlined. And as you scroll through it, uh, as the headings change, they, they go, now, there's a hamburger sign on the, on the top left-hand corner. If you click on that, you can quickly jump to any part of that judgment. So again, like Jade, similar to Jade, if you know a particular heading, you'd remember, like for example, the security, Justice Kay's decision about the security, you quickly jump there and it's take, you're taking a meeting to that part. And then if you go to the very bottom of the decision, uh, you'll see, sorry, slow down, slow down, go, go back. Do you see there are little dots on the side? That indicates that other courts have considered that particular paragraph. And so if you click on it, it will load quickly and it will show you which other courts. And you see what well, this is the same principle we have in Jade. Even though this is reported as 59 VR 607, it, we pick up all the media mutual citations that are parallel to that, which is 27 VSCA 36A, and show you those as well. So if this decision of DDA was reported in multiple report, report series and cited in different ways, we would still pick it up. And you can see how carefully we cite it and we show you the other decision. Now, if you wanted to see 2020 VSC 165, decision Justice Digby in ADCON, you simply click on the ADCON and you jump, if you just click on the ADCON and it will jump straight into Jade and there you are. And so you can see that. Now, somehow that's got very big. Uh, 
and we're going to shrink that page a bit so it's a little bit easier to see for people uh, that don't want to be spot. So you can see immediately you can jump backward if you go backwards. If you go in the back back arrow, you can jump back into. If you go back using the back arrow of the browser, you can go straight back into Deer Dirt, and there you are. Now, if you scroll to the very bottom of Deer Dirt. You'll see there are citations, as we pass through it, there are citations in it. They're all linked to, to Jade or linked to back to the VR. So if you want to find the slow down, just one, just one, you go back, back up a fraction. See, see here, see the uh, Backman or, or Sugar Australia. If you simply clicked on Backman uh, at 54, It'll jump immediately inside the Victoria reports to back in a BHP power. So you can so you can stay within the Victoria reports. Now that's a, an additional subscription, but it's a very handy thing to have if you practice uh, in, in Victoria or if you want to keep up with the very important uh, jurisprudence of Victoria reports. All right. Uh, now let's move on. So uh, we've had many uh, helpful questions, and we'll work through some of those in a moment. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about why you, specific reasons why you may wish to undertake uh, case law research. Uh, the first way, the first reason, the most common reason uh, on a daily basis is you want daily alerts. You want to know what's happening and you want to keep up to date. Uh, you want to keep up to date with uh, relevant courts and tribunals. Another reason that's quite common for current awareness is you want to work out which are the best decisions to read. So. If you were interested in the question of a guarantee or recent cases on guarantee, that's quite a hard thing to find. Uh, and uh, you, you may want to work out ways in which you can find that. And the best way to find that uh, can often be to keep up to date using Jade and, and Jade Alerts. And I'll show you the Jade Alerts part of Jade now, if we can go back to Jade, please. Because we'll jump out of the Victorian reports into Jade. And in Jade, if you click to the top, uh, if you just click on the on the, uh, the name of the case, you'll have taken off the top, and you can you can see when you log into Jade, which uh, all right. So we're logged into Jade. Nick Nick's logged into Jade now, uh, and he has a thing called My Jade, and in My Jade you have uh, ways in which you can set you can set tags, you can set alerts. Now if we go to the alerts on the left hand side. You can you can customize you can customize your alerts. So um, if I if I wanted to have alerts, uh, and so Nick Nick likes his alerts from the only from the High Court and New South Wales Court of Criminal Appeal, and and only from the Victorian uh, Court of Appeal. Now, if let's say Nick wanted to add a new alert, he can do that. And when he does that, he can you can do an alert which is really like a search. What most people like to do with alerts is to use the collection. So get everything from a particular court or a particular tribunal. Now, if you wanted everything in Jade from every court and tribunal, you know, all courts, don't do that. It's crazy. We get thousands of judgments a day. It's crazy. Uh, all legislation, we get many hundreds of uh, updates to legislation each day or certainly each week. Uh, but do be a little bit more precise. Perhaps you want to know everything that happened in the high court. If you did that, you would get the High Court, you get everything below. So that's the High Court. You'd get uh, any kind, any time that there were transcripts in the High Court, you'd receive that. Any time the High Court issued one of its bulletins, uh, you'd see that. Any time there was a special leave disposition, which is usually a publication of multiple uh, dispositions of the High Court uh, special leave application, you'd see that. Most people choose HCA and HCA Trans as the two. So let's try that. Let's just do HCA. Click on that. And then you can go back again and you can add more. So then let's get HCA trans. And then let's add, let's add, for example, um, let's add, for example, uh, all, uh, all intermediate, Commonwealth intermediate appellate courts. And then let's add, so we practice in New South Wales. So let's go down to uh, state courts uh, and we go all, all state and territory courts of appeal, say we want that. And then say we want to have uh, New South Wales Court of Appeal. So we can just simply type 
And if, instead of going down the list, we can simply type NSWSC and you see, and you see there it is. And you can then just click on that as a selector and you add that. So you can quickly, now that's a collection. Um, if you, if you want to then limit yourself to particular topics, there's a drop down menu and you can pick on different, different topics that we've selected. Uh, and, and there are a whole series of those. But again, you may wish to have your own text search as the like. Most people start by not doing it by topic, we're just using collections, but you can try, you can play with that. And you can craft your own search terms in the text if you want to do that. You can also set up alerts so that uh, when you're logged in, if you have your favourite case, say Ice TV is your favourite case, and you want to know any time a court cites Ice TV, when you're in, when you're looking at Ice TV, you can create a, an alert for when Ice TV is cited, and you can also create an alert. Let's just say that so. So remember to save it. You can set your alert frequency. You want to edit it, very easy. Go back, click on the checkbox, click on edit. And then you can see, say you want an alert frequency of twice a day or immediate, you can do that. Uh, one month, three months. Don't just use once a, one day, once a day, but you can have an instant, some people choose instant, that will, that will fill your inbox unbearably. Don't try that. Um, we tell you that most people get in trouble when they are instant, but that's certainly certainly once a day, once every twice or twice a day after you. Um, you can give a name to your alert so you can remember it if you have different alerts for different purposes. If, for example, you're doing a case on a particular topic, you want to know what's happening, you can do that. If you're using J Professional, you can also share your alert and share the outcome of your alert with others. Uh, and um, if if you happen to have set up an alert, that works as well. So let's just save, save that alert once a day as an email. And then tomorrow morning at around 6 a.m., Nick will start receiving those together with the other, other items. Uh, you, you can then, if you then look at uh, the uh, question of tagging a particular case and getting alert from the case, let's go back to Ice TV, search for Ice TV. Again, very easy, press enter, documents in Jade very large font again, but that's only because of what Nick's, Nick has done. You can then, uh, you can then set uh, an alert for the case by simply going to the bottom in the citation report. Click on the citation report button on the uh, right hand section under. Uh, click there and you can see, you what? So not very big, keeps keeps jumping you know, up a bit. You can then you can then have uh, you can then have a alert when this document is cited. You see the alert when this document is cited. So if you click on that, alert when this document is cited, and you can see a search name is created for you. Every four weeks, you might want to make it every day, but let's say every four weeks. Let's just say the moment. Let's click on save. Okay, and then imagine you get sick of receiving that. You can go back to My Jade. So if we jump to the top of the page, back to My Jade, and you'll see there's the alert citations of 2019 HCA 14. So if you don't want that, you can just click on the left checkbox next to it, click on delete, and you won't be bothered anymore uh, after you confirm. There are, and it just gives you that nice little note. So that's that's uh, something you can do as a subscriber to Jay. Alerts are available to people. We've got questions, more questions. That's something that um, users can do, uh, whether you're a professional user or not, the sharing part. Now we have lots of interesting questions. So Jackie's passed me these questions. Um, the first one is finding a definitive case on a particular topic. What is the quickest way to determine the most persuasive case? That's the case of the most precedent value. All right. Well, that's a that is that's both uh, art and science. Uh, to do that, um, let's go to the next part of our discussion, which is which is about uh, which is about uh, what is the code of courts and what is the common law of Australia. Let's just have a look about that. But before I do that, let me just say a few things about uh, authorised reports and about. 
uh, and about current awareness. So uh, if, uh, if authorised reports are available, try to use them because uh, they have head notes, as you would have seen, and they have succinct summaries of legal principle written by, uh, by uh, people who are generally selected for their knowledge in a particular area. I think we've got a slide for that. Uh, there we are. So the, so the uh, authorised reports contain uh, really a, comprise a snapshot of, of legal developments of particular jurisdictions. So really, to answer your question about finding the definitive case of a particular topic, you should really perhaps start with looking in the authorised reports to see if you can find uh, a particular decision on a particular topic. Um, the head notes can help you locate that and the citations are usually correct and often updated. Obviously, if a report comes out and the citation of a case comes out later in a different authorised report series, that won't always be detected, but in Jade it will. Uh, the catchwords have been uh, better adjusted, so they better fit in with, uh, with the, uh, uh, what I'll call a control taxonomy. That is, uh, the topics are better controlled. They're not written by the judge, but they're written according to a particular index. And the other point is that case law goes back to the late 1800s. Uh, so there's almost 150 years of available case law that's in Australia. And if you're looking in, uh, in uh, English reports, they go back, of course, to the 1200s and in the English reports, uh, there are many cases that are still cited by the High Court and by other courts in Australia from that period. So, uh, and they're of course presented in easy to read format. So, you know, start, you try to use authorised reports if you can. Uh, what's happened in recent years with authorised reports, particularly in Australia, uh, Queensland authorised reports are free for personal use, that is for personal professional use. You just simply sign up and you have access to the Queensland reports. In New South Wales, you can have access to the uh, New South Wales law reports at a low price per report. So if you have particular reports you refer to all the time, you can buy those and uh, download them and they're always available to you. The Victorian reports uh, has a format where you can subscribe on a cheap annual basis, which is fully integrated with Jade. And that, that gives you access to the kind of clips on the side that I've shown you where if a case is considered later, you have that. If you don't want to have an annual subscription to, or a monthly subscription to the Victorian reports, you can simply buy the reports that you like in Victoria. And again, they're always up to date for you. So you can always log in, click on it, and you'll always have them up to date. So that's the reason for doing that. So to answer your question, um, the definitive case in a particular topic, the starting point should be the uh, uh, look in authorised reports or something that's likely to be an authorised report. Often the hardest part is to work out how you find the terminology that's likely to lead to some kind of sensible, uh, sensible case search if you're looking for that. Uh, and we'll look, at, we'll look at some ideas in a moment. Um, there, there's a, another question, which is uh, the, that I had a case where an application been made to the Queensland Supreme Court for a direction in respect to a New South Wales power of attorney. Um, how, how can Jay quickly help me find out whether the Queensland Supreme Court has jurisdiction? Well, that's something we'll be dealing with on the next occasion about um, statutory, advanced statutory work, but certainly uh, that is something that Jay works very well with, with statute and then with case law. Um, we were asked, we were asked this last time, we were asked this again this time, other products have flags for cases, red, yellow and green. Uh, is there anything like that in Jade? Uh, uh, I haven't answered that already, but, but I did on the last occasion. The answer to that is uh, we don't do that because it's very hard to determine whether a case is still good case law. That's where the professional judgment comes in. Uh, there are many reasons why a case, uh, parts of a case may be down, but other parts of the case may still be good law. You need to do that research to work through that. And Jade really gives you the tools to be able to do that because you can see if a case has been recently considered or doubted or, over, or overruled if it's in the same hierarchy of cases. And so you can take some time to read through the, annota read through the annotations, the clips on the side and work through that. Um, uh, you can do a text search in the green, the green citation on the right side of the paragraph. You can do a text, you can do a text search on those results uh, if you're in the browser, you can certainly search in the browser, but you can also limit items by jumping in. So if you find a case, if you find a case on the right-hand side of the clips, you can pop it open and search it. If you pop it open, you'll find a, it will jump to that particular point in the case. 
Um, what, someone asked, what, at what time is it appropriate to use the MNC, the medium neutral citations, uh, and what time should you avoid using them and instead use the report of published this year? Well, let's go back, let's go back to, the, to Jade again and to recent high court cases, and I'll show you how that works. So let's go now to home. No, home on Jade. Sorry. All right. And so you'll see, let's look at see the cases recently. So let's just go to, to Hocking, which is an interesting case. Now, what the High Court has stopped doing, and if we can shrink that a little bit. So there are 125 cases cited by the court in that case. So it's, it's very, very case rich which is the reason why I've selected it for this, for illustrating this point. If you, if you, we go back to, if we go back to the case itself and we start scrolling through it, what Nick has done is he's changed the font of this, of, of what he's looking at. And you can do that in Jade. You can set a range from a range of fonts. So we use particular font types and Nick's changed it. Uh, if we keep scrolling through uh, and keep scrolling through, you'll see there are references. Do you see, so if we stop there, whereas the practice of the New South Wales Court of Appeal is to cite a media neutral citation and, and, a, uh, and a reported citation when something's reported, the practice of the High Court is to only cite, uh, for cases other than the High Court, to only cite the, uh, the most authoritative report. So you won't, you won't be able to know that this You'll know that this has a media neutral citation equivalent because you know from what I've said today that because it's after the year 2000, an Australian case will have that because you know FCR are federal court reports and so they're the decisions of the federal court, the, the authorised reports of the federal court. But you won't know. If you want to find out what that is, you can click on it and it will pop up and we'll tell you. And we'll also tell you that it's also been reported in parallel in the ALRs and the ALDs. What you should always do the best practice, if you're citing things, is to cite the media neutral citation if you wish to, and then also cite the most authoritative. So as this now appears in the FCRs, if you're talking to me today, you would cite the 255 FCR1. Now, if you want to do that really quickly, uh, and bear in mind, this is something that's been uh, yeah, exactly mixed, mixed onto it already. You just click there, there it is. Uh, and you can quickly format that and paste it in. So we've, we've done the hard work for you. If you want to, sometimes people like to include who the judge was and the date, sometimes that matters in a case. If you want to have a link so you can link back to Jay, you can do all of that super fast. Uh, so uh, that answers your question. You really should always try to have the authority to report. And if you are, if you are citing the FCRs and the like, you should really try to get hold of it or at least have, have, a, have a look for it. But again, uh, you can often find an, enough the current citations to get to get yourself started and you can give that work to other people to try to get, get arranged. Um, what should I be searching if I want to find a name of a particular expert to see if they have four? Well, uh, you, of course, that's a very good use of, uh, very good use of full text searches. Uh, and a lot of people do search for experts uh, that way. So certainly that's, that would be a good example. Uh, what people generally use, I think, full text searching for is to search for themselves, uh, search for their opponents, search for, for the bench, and of course, search uh, for uh, experts and the like and witnesses, and it can be very, can be very useful. Um, the, uh, does Jade have or will have plans to create a native iPad application? Uh, yes, we do. Uh, we are working on that at, as we speak, and we will have an application available that will work across um, uh, iOS and Android, uh, which, will, which is very exciting development. We've been working on that for the last little while, uh, and that will allow you to do annotations and the like, which you can already do. So Jade, Jade works already quite well on an iPad, as it is, uh, and you can do annotations and the like, but if you will find some other features that were pretty exciting. We expect to announce that in the next uh, week or so. Uh, you can't see uh, questions from other participants, uh, so I'm reading them out. Well, there you go, I've done that. Um, uh, 
And I think someone asked the same question again, so I've dealt with that. Um, uh, so uh, someone wants to know how Jay treats documents that are uploaded for analysis, that is, run through a citator, uh, even when they're uploaded and deleted. Um, I just want to tell you about that. So we encrypt, so Jay uses a whole lot of advanced encryption, uh, and anything that you upload into Jay is only available to you. It's encrypted to you. It's only available when you're locked into the system. Uh, there are other additional levels of uh, control. You can delete those documents so they're never available. Uh, you can make it so that those documents can only be opened expressly by you when you when you press when you measure a pass key. And there are other other features to do that. So we we have as uh, as um, uh, organisations in the, on the enterprise subscription to Jade that include. Uh, prosecutors and the like, and so we've, very, we've gone through a very careful process of ensuring that uh, anything that's uploaded in the J is private to you. Courts and tribunals use it, we can't see it, and we, we, there's no way that even if someone, even if a J editor had access to the system, cannot see what you've uploaded, and uh, that, that is confidential to you. Uh, what we do in terms of parsing the documents is we uh, look to our system to find matches and report those back to you. And that document is again, private to you. And we've got other systems available depending on your level of concern and we're certainly working through that. Uh, I see the time at six o'clock, so we'll keep, uh, we'll keep quickly going through a couple of other uh, questions. Um, uh, if you have other questions about confidential information, please, uh, or how we deal with information within Jade, please ask, it's often easier to discuss those uh, in a conversation rather than uh, through a question and answer session, but by all means. Uh, but it's something that we've designed from the ground up. When we started Jay, we designed it so that uh, the, the purpose of it was to uh, ensure that everything that we do is confidential. Just as I use Jay at my research, I upload documents, I'd be horrified if I knew anyone could see those and I can't. Um, and I use Jade uh, sorry, as a user as well, of course, as um, someone that's trying to look at how we improve performance of Jade. And so, for example, uh, if I'm uploading uh, authority, if I'm uploading my submissions to have a check to see the citation is correct, I do that all the time. All right, well, we look through the Jade interface and we look through those, those elements. Let's just, um, let's just look at uh, a quick query about what I call the comedy of courts, that is, uh, some of you have heard about a single, uh, a single, uh, if we go back to Jade for, for a moment, a single common law. So say we're in Jade, and if we go back to Jade for a second, thank you. Uh, and say we uh, want to do one more search. And we want a single single common law. Just type that in without quotes. Just single common law. So we can quickly. We've heard that phrase. We can we see quickly that John Fife was there. But let's imagine we uh, knew about uh, we knew we heard about something about uh, intermediate appellate courts and comedy. Now, don't forget that you can always go on the, you go on uh, Google and look for cases about, or articles about comedy amongst intermediate appellate courts, and you will find something useful. But let's just say uh, we, uh, we say, um, we've heard about Farrah, and we've heard about comedy of courts. Now, the reason why I'm raising this is it's a very important principle when you're doing legal research, and that is, the principle, um, which which is in uh, Farah and Sadie, and we'll go there. So let's just type in uh, two thirty CLR eighty nine um, at uh, square bracket one three five. Press enter. So that gives me the statement at that paragraph about comedy where courts are not to depart 
Uh, if you keep it scrolling further down, uh, intermediate federal courts it should not depart from decisions in another court, another jurisdiction. Now, if you happen to have SAD in the authorised report, what you'd see is this is working or press the button or press it. So if you if we look at SAD, this is what you see. Oh, uh, here we are. Sorry. So this is the report, authorised report from SAD. So SAD and Farrow, and you'll see in here, uh, you'll see there's per curiam, intermediate appellate courts and trial judges in Australia should not depart from the decision of an intermediate appellate court in another jurisdiction in relation to non statutory law unless they are convinced the decision is plainly wrong. So what, what you'll find is if you look at that paragraph in uh, we go back to the uh, we go back to the uh, Farrah and the screen and click on the top Farrah constructions that, that bit. Yep. Yep. Click on there. It takes you immediately to 135. Now, what you see there is what, there's a huge number of citations to that passage. So one way uh, you see there's 335 citations. So one way you can look through cases to work out uh, important passages in decisions is you can use it like a heat map, and I'll show you how to do that at the top of the page. But that is the that is a case where what what that has become is an interpretation of the meaning of what is plainly wrong. What does plainly wrong mean? And so. The development of that principle is a development around the meaning of plainly wrong. How, do, how does a court assess what is plainly wrong? If you wanted to know what Farrah, so Farrah and Saley, of course, stands for a number of principles. This is just an example of one comment that is incredibly important as a statement of principle, which is an edict from the High Court about how intermediate appellate courts around Australia are to be treated. And it indicates that you need, when you do your legal research, you need to look at Intermediate appellate courts anywhere they're located. You can't just stick to New South Wales or Victoria, wherever you're located, but you need to conduct your research on Australia by basis. Because if there is a principle that exists that supports your case or uh, resolves or otherwise uh, answers your particular legal problem, even though it's in another jurisdiction, there's one, there's a single common law of Australia, and therefore you need to be very careful about, uh, about dealing with that. So if we go to the very top of this page very quickly, and uh, you'll see, cite, see most cited. If you click, see on the right hand side, most cited, click on that. You can then see which is the parent. Oh, and surprise, surprise, 135 that we were just at, and 134. So there's a little bit of. But what you can also do is you can just, if you wanted to read that decision. In, in its logical order and show cited sections only, you can click on cited sections only and you can just read through it. So if you just wanted to jump to those passages that have been considered in later decisions, now this is not the best way to, to read through a case, you should read the whole thing, but if you're in a hurry and you're just trying to get a feel for what the case might stand for, this is a very fast way to deal with it. Now, it won't work for you in cases that of course have just come out, because there won't be any other citations to it, but we're working on systems for that. All right. Um, so uh, if you track through there, you'll find that there are numerous considerations and very quickly, at paragraph 135, very quickly you can uh, find other, other consideration. All right. Um, I, haven't I haven't shown you the upload facility, but some of you know about it. Uh, feel free to try that out. Uh, and you'll see how that could work very efficiently for you. The user tags is another feature that's very important, uh, and the ability to pr provide quotes. All right. Um, 
the, we talked on the last occasion about starting with one good case. That's a very good starting point, but you can do other kinds of searches that work really well. And again, you can think about other, other methods. Do you see how calls, do you see how in paragraph, in footnote 99, calls uh, is a 2006 decision and it suggests we don't have it? That's something that we're constantly improving. So we have a project at the moment to ensure that if there are cases from after 2000 that are cited that we should be having in our system, we don't, we have a project to look at that and see how we can fix that. Uh, that's an example of that. So we have a, an active project. The other thing you need to know is that Jade doesn't just cover Australian cases in this kind of Citata system. If you go to the home page and you, you see that there are 480 law report series indexed. So we index uh, New Zealand, we index the UK, we index Canada, we index many American courts. Uh, uh, and we, we endeavour to uh, find various citations. And we read through cases regularly. So if we find that there are citations to cases in recent decisions of the intermediate health courts or the high court, we haven't yet indexed, we add those. So if you find something, a case series that we've missed, please let us know and we can certainly start to index it. All right, well, let's go back to the slides for a second and then we can um, hand off. So the next, we're over time tonight, but Thank you for your questions. Um, the, I've, I've already talked about refining uh, the reasons and searching full text, for, and I've talked about authorised reports. We'll send the, the we'll send this the these slides out to you so you can have a, a, a memoir of the slides. We've talked about paragraph 135. Uh, what else have we got? Anything else? And then we've we've got the refining cases and. Current awareness I've mentioned, and the top five decisions I've mentioned, so we've done that. That's all. So uh, our next session is going to be on uh, is on uh, legislation research, advanced legislation research. We'll build on the experience we've had at the previous session and this session, uh, and it will be next week. If you uh, know someone that might benefit from it hasn't yet signed up, please uh, ask them to sign up and. Uh, invite them, it's free. Uh, if you have further questions for any of the J people or anyone at Level 22, put those through. If we don't yet have those, uh, answer those questions tonight, we'll certainly make sure we answer them for you. Um, if you, uh, the, obviously a number of the questions have been anonymous. If you want to identify yourself, then we'll get back to you. Uh, we have people from Barnett available to do training, one-on-one -on -one training, you just need to ask. Send your details through to Jackie uh, and we'll make sure that you receive training one on one so you can ask those questions. Other than that, thanks very much for coming and uh, we look forward to all seeing you uh, next, uh, next week. Thanks. Goodbye.